Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. I know I've labeled this video as the final results from the ammonium chloride test, but I suspect by the end of this, there's going to be at least a little bit of interest in seeing uh, one retest and possibly more. So we'll see how that goes as this progresses. So at this point, I have cleaned out that end tank, uh, the same protocol as before, and reset that and let it bubble for a day and a bit uh, before I got to this point. So what I've done here is I've added the sponge filter and in the tank on the right, which is going to be the planter filter part of this experiment, I took all the plants out, removed all the fish of course, and then caught as much of the other animal life as I could, which were uh, snails, shrimp, and scuds. But those of you who have watched me uh, with the planter filter before, you know there's an awful lot of life in those things and there's just no way I can catch it all. I didn't really want to disturb it that much because I figured it would skew the results uh, more than just leaving a few snails and scuds in the tank. So I did as best as I could, and then I replaced all the plants and the, the planters and everything else uh, back into the aquarium. And also you'll see the little uh, pile of uh, lava rock there. Uh, that was in the tank already, so I figured I'd just leave that in as well. So this is the start for the experiment. And what I did is I ran them at the same time. I dosed them both with the exact same amount of ammonium chloride and then took the readings for that as uh, the days progressed. Now, before I get to this, I do want to talk to you about the results from uh, the undergravel filter. Now, if you remember back to uh, when I ran that experiment, uh, it was three days in when I ran out of uh, ammonia test kit. It was really annoying because it was almost at the end I had thought and my experiences up to that point kind of thought it would be. Uh, so what I did is I ordered a more ammonia test kit and then I just let that tank run because well, I figured at that point I was going to have to do a complete reset on that and run the uh, ammonium chloride test on it again. Uh, but I figured I might as well just leave it run. So this is the tank by the time that test kit finally came in. In total, 22 days from when this experiment started. <laughs> it's crazy that nowadays when you try to get stuff in, it just takes forever. So I did get the test kit in and I figured, well, I might as well just test this, see what happens, see what is that. I was expecting it to be zero, of course. And imagine my surprise when 22 days after this thing had started, I still had ammonia reading on this. Uh, this was a ridiculous result. Um, uh, underground filters are great filters. There's no reason for there to be anything in here. So my first thought was, there has to be something wrong with the test kit. I mean, I got one in and it had to be faulty, so fortunately I had another aquarium that I had just reset. I uh, This tank here, I had taken out all the fish and the plants and everything. I hadn't scrubbed it down at this point, but I had to do a bit of water change and I was getting it set for uh, putting the pair of breeding angels up in here. And you can see I got a heater in there to warm it up. So I took that water and I tested it and it is perfectly fine. There's no ammonia in it at all. So this left me uh, at a loss pretty much. I really couldn't find any logical way that that underground filter was still having ammonia issues considering how long it's been. I mean, if none of the other tanks I test, I mean, I have 10 or more of these filters running and I don't have any issues with them. I've tested them for ammonia when I first started these experiments and there's no problem whatsoever. So something else must be happening. Either there is some organisms that are in the filter and the ammonia has killed them off and they are now decaying and producing ammonia. But one would think that they would produce uh, that in, uh, well, in an amount that the filter can handle, uh, but I don't know. So if you haven't guessed already, this is the result I think that you're going to probably want to retest on, and I suspect I'm going to do so uh, anyway. So even if you don't want to, I do want to test that one more time and uh, see how that goes. So let's get on to uh, the current results, uh, the ones from this experiment here, uh, the one that I ran at the same time. So I put the ammonia chloride in, and then I got the, the first results. In order to ensure that I don't run out of ammonia test kit again, 
I didn't bother doing uh, zero reading. I figured six hours would be more than uh, sufficient for that. I did a six hour because I thought there was a, a slight possibility, at least in the back of my mind, that the planter filter might actually be able to uh, remove all the ammonia in you know, a relatively short period of time. <laughs> Part of me is still just hanging on to the fact that uh, some of these filters are going to be more efficient than the others at uh, working at this. So this is the six hour reading, and as you can see, well, a little bit lighter. The, the planter filter is uh, slightly clearer than the sponge filter, but it is way too early to tell anything about this. One of the other changes I made in the protocols for this is I'm not using drops now uh, in the test kits. I am using a one mil syringe, which is roughly 10 drops. And that way they are all identical. So that way I'm not getting any variation. So 24 hours, it is definitely lighter now. You can see a considerable difference between the two. And I was actually really kind of happy about this at this point because that means that the platter filters are, well, relative to the four I've tested so far, uh, the most efficient, which is nice because it, it is a, a result that I kind of expected. All those plants have to be feeding on uh, at least a little bit of that ammonia. So that's uh, the 24 hour mark. I did continue this uh, right up to uh, 72 hours and then like I said, the results are a little interesting here. The sponge filter uh, at this point looks uh, to be lagging behind, let's say. Uh, not by a whole lot, but by enough to be noticeable. So at 48 hours, the results seem almost identical. I mean, <clears throat> there is not much difference between 24 and 48 hours. Again, I am keeping these as consistent test-wise as possible. Uh, the best way, of course, would be to uh, get a digital readout on these and then have it um, be a lot more accurate. Uh, but I don't have that kind of money and that kind of setup. Uh, but this is good enough for, I think, for this sort of experiment. So, like I said, it doesn't look any different. And this is 24 hours, again, further along than uh, the last uh, set that you saw. But uh, at least the planter filter is still in the lead. And... Uh, the final results uh, when it gets to the 70 hours, which is a three day mark, which is faster than the other two filters tested, uh, they are both clear, which means uh, in as far as this experiment goes, which is not exactly 100% valid because of the test conditions, the planter filter is the most efficient at removing uh, the ammonium chloride. It's just slightly ahead of a sponge filter and the sponge filter is ever so slightly ahead of a box filter. That's pretty much the results that I can get from this that are acceptable. Uh, not enough of a difference. We're talking about uh, half a day, three quarters of a day difference between all of them. Now, the result obviously for the underground filter is thoroughly messed up. I uh, can't really explain it. I can probably rationalize it but uh, that's not a, a good way of doing these things so what I'm gonna do is uh, even if you guys aren't really interested in that result <coughs> being retested I am going to run it again I'll put it in an underground filter uh, get that going properly and uh, run that test one more time and we'll see what the result is because if it's repeatable, uh, then there's seriously something interesting going on with underground filters that is different than the other uh, three filter styles. This uh, clip here is just to show you that there wasn't really any harm done to any of the plants. Uh, there wasn't really any change in clarity, chemistry that I can see, uh, visual aspects of this. I'm going to put fish back into that tank there. Uh, the one on the left, obviously, I'm going to clean it one more time and rerun with another underground filter. We'll see how that goes. So anyway, as always, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe and leave me comments. Let me know what you think of this because even though the protocols for this experiment are far outside what you would get in a normal aquarium situation, unless you're massively overfeeding and underfiltering an aquarium, uh, they are interesting results. So let me know what you think. 
And uh, like I said, I'm going to redo that experiment. I uh, hopefully will have something for you guys uh, on Sunday's vlog. If not this Sunday, uh, the Sunday after. As I'm definitely going to keep this going. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And bye for now.